What's up guys? I'm back with another reaction video for you guys today. Uh today I'm going to be reacting to Black Adam vs Apocalypse DC vs Marvel Death Battle. Uh I'm actually getting very more and more interested in these death battles because some of these death battles be freaking crazy and just over the top like ruthless. Brutal. And I like it. So I, I I know I did a couple reaction videos to this to these death battles. Um uh I just want to thank you. We finally reached like 500 something subscribers. So let's keep going. Let's keep grinding. If you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe. But now without a further ado, we're going to get to the video. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. We're faced with challenges in life all the time, especially these days. It feels like it's basically constant. Because of that, it can be overwhelming to learn how to find solutions. A good therapist can teach you to be a better problem solver and make it easier to accomplish your goals, big or small. Therapy can be a great way to work through the problems you've been dealing with in your personal and professional life. It can be great to have someone to talk to, to help heal emotionally, figure out things like anxiety or depression, or even just unload stress from the week. It might be scary or intimidating at first, but talking with your therapist how long these videos be the outside world. For a battery thing. recharge before you're back out there. If any of that sounds appealing to you, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, affordable, and best of all, totally online. All you have to do is fill out a quick survey to get matched with a therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DeathBattle today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash DeathBattle. Black Adam, DC ferocious champion of Shazam. Apocalypse, Marvel's baleful mutant conqueror. Anubis, so Ra. For over 30 centuries, Egyptian mythology spawned countless legends. And we've got comics big as baddies this side of the Nile. He's wins and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. You've heard of Gotham, the Mascara, Metropolis, just a few of DC's unique tourist spots. But there's another. South of the Mediterranean Sea and north of the Sinai Peninsula rests the sovereign nation of Kondok. While those spots have Superman and Batman solving friends like it's magic, Kondok's got an actual magic man saving them. Black Adam. Long ago, Tess Adam and his people were enslaved by the conqueror Evok and his army of barbarians. Evok. All he had left was his nephew, Amon. Upon fleeing certain death, the two stumbled onto the Rock of Eternity, a mystic lair that has defended magic since the dawn of time. Here, the two earned an audience with the lair's masters, the excellently named Council of Wizards. Seeing the purity in little Lamont's heart, this wannabe Gandalf decked him out with super magic. And being the nice guy he is, Amon shared some magic power with his uncle. Spoiler alert! Not his best idea. They returned the conduct to free their people, but their methods reached an impasse. Amon wanted to use his powers to resolve matters in a peaceful fashion. However, Tess Adam desired vengeance, emancipation through slaughter. So Uncle Tess set his nephew down, man to man, looked him straight in the eyes, and then freaking killed him. Then used his borrowed power to steal the rest of the super magic. You know what they say? No nephew. No problem! With the full might of the wizards at his fingertips, Black Adam annihilated the barbarians and freed his city. Suffice to say, he's not exactly your typical hero. Even the superhero A-listers don't try him, and for good reason! Kmart Merlin here didn't give Adam some nerdy wand, but that dope shit, the living lightning! While it may function just like real lightning, this living lightning is among the most potent spells in comics history. It's magic lightning! You ever see normal lightning kickstart a giant heart and juice up the flash? Because Black Adam's lightning did, and activating it is as easy as saying the magic word, Shazam! Wait, wait, hold up, that's Billy's word. Shouldn't he shout like, Black Adam, or Shazoo? Remember, uh, Kmart Merlin? This is Mamaraga, the mightiest of the wizards. To better protect the multiverse's magic, he promotes individuals to be his mythic champion. Black Adam is one of the first. So, kind of like Shazam with another name. I like my idea better. Shazoo! It really lets you know you gotta be quiet, like when you're in a zoo or, you know, the animals will f***ing kill you. 
Wait, is that not a real thing? Can I talk in the zoo? But when Tef Adam shouts his magic word, lightning pours from the clouds, transforming him from meager human to wizard Jesus. And vice versa. Simply put, Black Adam is imbued with the powers of God. Well, God, plural, as his gifts come from multiple mythological legends. At first, he got juiced up from the Greek gods. Zeus, Atlas, Kirk, you know, all those buff guys and gals. But it didn't really work out, though, because he kind of died. Yet Kondok craved for their hero's return. So Black Adam's most devoted followers collected all of his ashes and prayed their hearts out. This time, to their own pantheon. <laughs> Goodbye, muscles, and hello, bird people! Black Adam was reborn, now with the powers of the Egyptian pantheon. Gods like Shu, Amun, and Horus gave Adam the basics. Super strength, speed, flight, and an undying body. But the real magic with the other three. The power of Aten channels the living lightning throughout his entire body for combat purposes. And the wisdom of Zahuti improves Black Adam's strategic thinking. It's the council of knowledge from the gods that clues Black Adam in on how to defeat his enemies. Like, for instance, when evil Joker Batman drove Billy mad, Billy went off King Shazam on conduct. But guess what? Zahuti had Black Adam instinctively lead Billy into a trap to destroy his ass with the power of Sunday prayers. Hallelujah! Holy shit! And finally, <laughs> the courage of Mahen. Besides minor healing and resistance to mental attack, Mahen's power granted Black Adam an indomitable will. He's got him through some really rough patches. His family? Dead. His country? Wasted. His wife got revived. She turned to stone. You can knock him down, sure, but he ain't staying there. Mahen helped make Black Adam a non-wavering and decisive leader. The whole world can turn against him, but he would not care so long as Kondok is safe. To reach those ends, he's partnered with the Justice Society of America, the Society of Supervillains, and even the Justice League. Rubbed elbows with Superman one day and Lex the next. So, uh, is Black Adam a good guy or a bad guy? Uh, neither. Only the side that benefits his people matters. He's not concerned with morality, and his brash nature is frequently misunderstood. It's what led to the entire JSA jumping him. Twice. And they still couldn't check him. Adam's just built that different. Black Adam caught sandstorms with a single clap, pushed the moon, and killed the four horsemen of the apocalypse. One time when space cultists came a knocking on Earth, he fought side by side with his best bro, Sinestro. Afterward, when the Yellow Lanterns dipped and took their rings with them, Sinestro let Black Adam keep the one he got. Now that's a bromance. And can I just say, Black Adam makes a mean lightning tiger. He murdered a council of wizards and later endangered Mamoragan himself. And the almighty wizards are part of the Quintessence, basically DC's gods who watch over the multiverse. No surprise, since Black Adam effortlessly broke Spectre's body, another Quintessence person. Sure, he's torn off Hawkman's wing and tried to kill Wonder Woman, but through the eyes of his people and loved ones, Black Adam is a hero. A moment's gaze from their idol is all they need to carry on living. So invaders beware, no one's truly safe from the true, savage, champion of Shazam! Ah oh, shit, I was gonna hope I'd transform there. Shazoo! I'm here, I'm there. I'm not going anywhere. Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein. I hate ads, bro. Like, if people understood. Let me tell you about one of my favorite graphic novels. It spells the end of all days. When madness reigns supreme and order is shattered. Mounted upon white horses, death, destruction, pestilence, and famine bring about a world anew. It gets Dark as shit, like literally, and I'm there for it. Are you talking about the Bible? What? No, this is a Marvel comic. 5,000 years ago in Marvel Comics, the Egyptian Aqaba tribe birthed something terrible. An ugly child. To them, he was a demon. Like a mix between Great Value Thanos and a box of chopsticks. So they midnight dumpster baby to dance in the desert to die. Luckily, That's Ball cool. of the Crimson Sands tribe saw differently. Within this child, he saw a conqueror. He raised him as En Saba Nur, the morning light. And above all, he taught him one major lesson. Only the strong survive. Nur became a warrior, same as the fears, but his physical differences made his experience unique. He was stronger, smarter, and hated. Even to these people, he was an outsider. Then the pharaoh killed Baal and enslaved Nur. Dude had no one left on his side except for this chick who he had a thing for. But everyone he meets apparently just wants ugly people to die, even when he saves their life. She had just swipe right, girl, goddamn. And so he embraced the perceived truth. If he was a monster, he would 
prove it. Betrayed by all and respected by none, if no one would care for N. Sabanur, they would all fear Apocalypse. Long story short, he's a mutant. And not just a creepy looking dude like Beak over... Oh, God, I'm gonna screw up my mouth a little bit. <clears throat> anyway, he's got superpowers and they're on a whole nother level. He has inhuman physiology and intelligence, along with complete control over his molecular structure allowing him to reshape and mold his body however he pleases. Yeah, but I guess he's too proud to just, like, turn himself into Jason Momoa or something. With the combination of his not-so-screwed-type tactical brain and prowess, Apocalypse conquered Egypt, leading it into a prosperous age with an iron fist and an ocean of blood. He then set his sights on the very world itself. Just one problem. The world had a bunch of X-Men and Avengers running around stopping his world domination. To accomplish his big dream, Apocalypse needed something more. But that would all change upon the arrival of a certain mutant messiah. Okay, so first, Apocalypse found some space tech that belonged to Celestials, basically Marvel's gods. Despite its amazing potential, he wasn't able to make use of the technology until the time traveler Cable showed up to kill him. Instead, Cable accidentally infected Apocalypse with a techno-organic virus, a disease that turns organic matter to futuristic technology. Turns out, this is exactly what Apocalypse needed to access the Celestial Tech. With the promise that he would repay the Celestials later, he was bestowed a gem that would change the game forever. This is a Death Seed, a Celestial artifact with the purpose of leading Earth into a higher evolved form. By injecting a Death Seed into someone, they are transfigured into one of Apocalypse's horsemen a being of incredibly fatal power. Don't forget about that techno-organic virus either. Controlling the virus means controlling all technology with your mind. Cable couldn't tame it, but Apocalypse's power is so vast, he had no issues controlling it. So, take a god pyramid, add a super tech virus, multiply the X gene, and what do you get? An Apocalypse who is unrecognizable from his meager past. With these three under his command, any superpower you can think of is now at his disposal. Apocalypse can teleport, blast all sorts of energy, turn invisible, regenerate limbs, read minds, and friggin' fly. Look at him, Wiz! He's got his hands behind his back and he just doesn't give a shit! And most impressive is his ability to siphon energy. He once absorbed Cyclops' laser with his bare hands, the same laser that can split planets. It wasn't long before the virus incorporated technology into his molecules. With mere thoughts, he could construct fake bodies, entire robot armies, and even morph himself into a kaiju. At his peak, virtually no one stands okay, a chance. A On a bad day, a Apocalypse bodied six of the strongest X-Men in a minute. His telepathy alone contends with Jean Grey, one of the greatest psychics in Marvel. He's out-muscled and outpaced both Hulk and Thor. And we all know how crazy those two are. We're talking about heroes able to destroy the Marvel Universe. And in an alternate timeline, Apocalypse even slaughtered a celestial with his bare hands. His bare friggin' hands! Wow, way to pay him back for that salad they did you, bro. With that death seed in tow, it's hard to attribute Apocalypse as anything but a force of nature. Especially when said death seed has mutated beings capable of fighting the Phoenix Force, a cosmic entity and the primal force of life. In fact, Doctor Doom claims the Death Seed is directly comparable to the Phoenix itself. So much pain. So many bodies. Apocalypse is an agent of war and has the scars to back it up. And even when someone manages to take him down, so long as he's got blood, metal, and that Death Seed, he'll just keep coming back again and again and again. Ball would be proud. For what is more inevitable and more dramatic to the annihilation of humans, than the Apocalypse himself. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Mint Mobile. After years of fine print contracting getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when we first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, we thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. Mint Mobile's wireless quality is especially impressive. And as a world-class mad scientist, I'm pretty picky. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family. And it makes family start online. And all plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And you get to keep your current phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the 
flame shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash death battle. That's mintmobile.com slash death battle. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash death battle. Yeah, I know. All right, the combatants are set. We run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! levels of godlike ability. Both of their power supplies compared to cosmic beings like the Phoenix and Super Gandalf, and both but heroes like Thor and Wonder Woman. Right, the victor could not be deduced by strength and speed alone. Rather, it depended on how their abilities countered each other. In that regard, Apocalypse held many advantages. For starters, he could one-up the living lightning. For almost any power Black Adam had, Apocalypse had a better version of it, and then some. Frankly, half of Black Adam's pantheon grants them abilities that Apocalypse possessed through his mutant genes alone, notwithstanding all his other abilities from Celestial Tech, the Techno-Organic Virus, and the Death Sea. Well, Black Adam did have something Apocalypse didn't. The wisdom of Sahuti, Big Brain God, could definitely clue him in on that Death Seed stuff. And without a Death Seed, Apocalypse would not have fared nearly as well against Black Adam's strength and tenacity. So to win, Black Adam would have needed to figure out how to destroy the Death Seed, but Apocalypse could defend against that and had way more options for his own victory. His telepathy got the best of Jean Grey, and there's no reason Apocalypse couldn't mind-read Black Adam. The courage of Mahen may have safeguarded him from mental attacks, but it never made him immune to telepathy outright. 
But most importantly, Apocalypse could absorb all of Black Adam's energy powers and turn him right back around. The living lightning may be enchanted, but it is still lightning. It's frequently displayed properties of ionized energy. Thus, there's no reason Apocalypse couldn't absorb it for himself. Plus, it's been shared between people many times before, and the more it's given to other hosts, the weaker the original bearer becomes. Hell, stealing the power of the Living Lightning is how Teth Adam became Black Adam in the first place, so Apocalypse could do the same. By slurping up Black Adam's magic, Apocalypse grew in power while Black Adam got weaker. It was only a matter of time before Black Adam was literally helpless against the end of all things. Black Adam may have been power incarnate, but Apocalypse's wide array of powers and specific counters to the Living Lightning meant he could rise to the challenge. Chef thought he had him until Noor gave him the boot. The winner is Apocalypse. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be jumping into the next matchup next week. But you can always get more Death Battle right now by clicking one of those boxes right over there and by downloading the battle music linked down below. Wow, Trunks vs. Silver, October 2nd. That's crazy. Bro, that death battle was wild, bro. It was so wild. That's crazy to me, bro. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna sit here and lie. I'm not gonna sit here and hold you. I don't know. Um... I ain't gonna lie. I really hope you guys love this reaction. Again, if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe, like, comment, and I hope you have a very blessed day. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hey, hey, yeah.